Hello everyone, this video is a continuation on the last video I did in which we discovered the Shannon entropy, the information content definition of entropy. So if you haven't seen that video, it's best to go over and look at that first, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Um, but in the last video, just to recap very briefly, we discussed the definition for information content Q, which was put forward by Shannon, which, in which Shannon said that the information content of some statement I, Q, I, is equal to minus k, where k is a positive constant, multiplied by the log of pi, where pi is the probability of that event happening or that statement being true. So what can we say about this very briefly? Well, uh, a probability, pi, is always between 0 and 1. So 0 means it's never going to happen and 1 means it's always going to happen. Um, so that means that if the probability is 1, if something is absolutely certain, then log of 1 is equal to 0, so the information content is equal to 0. So if someone says, um, if someone tells us in advance that this thing is going to happen, there's no information for us there because we knew it was going to happen anyway. It was already certain to happen. So uh, because p is a fraction between 0 and 1, that means that log p is always negative because the log function, um, if this is p and this is log of p, then the log function looks something like that, which uh, crosses the axis at 1. So because p is always in this range between 0 and 1, that means log p is always negative. Um, so because k is a positive constant, that means that q is always positive. And moreover, as p gets smaller, as the probability of something becomes less and less and less, then log p becomes even more negative, we get a larger negative number, so the information content q becomes more positive. So as the probability of an event being true goes down, the information content we get goes up. So if something really unlikely is going to happen, and someone tells you in advance that it actually is going to happen, then you've gained a lot of information there. The more unlikely it is to happen, the greater the information content when we find out it does happen. So that's what we can say about the information content Q. We then also looked at the Shannon entropy S, which is defined as the average information content. So what that means is that if we take all the statements in our system, all the possible outcomes in our system, all the possible events in our system, whatever it might be, then we work out the information content for each event, each statement, which is minus K log pi, which pi is the probability of that statement, and then we multiply that by the probability of that statement occurring, which is pi, and then we sum that across the entire system, across all i. And this is how we get the average information content, and that is defined as the Shannon entropy S. So what we're going to do in this video is look at a couple of worked examples of using information content and the Shannon entropy with the hope that this will give you a more intuitive handle on what these concepts actually represent and what we're doing when we talk about them. So let's get into it. Our first example, we're going to look at rolling a die when that die is a fair die with each number equally likely and a loaded die where one number is much more likely than the others. Let's get into it. Right, so let's look at the fair die first. So, a fair die means that when I roll it, I get any number with equal probability. So, i here is, um, is each event. So, the die, when we roll it, can come up as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Those define the six different events for this system. And then pi is the probability associated with each event. And as you can see, pi is equal to 1 sixth for each event. Every number is equally likely to come up, so we have the same probability for each event here. So let's get calculating. First off, we are going to calculate the information content for each one of these events. Now, because the probability is the same and the information content is only related to the probability, then the information content will be the same for each one of these events. So we only have to calculate it once. So QI, the information content for any of these events, is equal to minus K log of 1 over 6. Um, and, well, let's simplify this a bit. We know that 1 over 6 is equal to 6 to the minus 1. So this is minus k log of 6 to the minus 1. And one of the rules of logarithms is that if you have in the argument of the logarithm some number to some power, then what we can actually do is bring this power out the front. And um, if we do that here, then we get this is equal to k log 
of 6, because this minus sign cancels with the minus 1 which we bring out front. So, the information content for each statement is k log 6, um, and let's also calculate the average information content, aka the Shannon entropy. So the Shannon entropy S, if we look at this formula up here, is um, we have minus k, the sum over i of the probability of each thing happening, uh, multiplied by the log of that probability. Now, because each one is the same, what I can do is I can say minus k log of 1 over 6, that's the information content for each, for each statement, um, and then I multiply that by the probability of each statement, which is 1 over 6, um, and I'm adding this up uh, six times because um, I'm, I have to add it for each single event, so I have to times the whole thing by six. So in this case, the entropy is equal to k log six. Now, um, another thing with, uh, with Shannon entropy is that, and information content, is that if we set the k equal to one and we make the log of log base two, then this is measured in bits. So if we do that here, then k log six is equal to log six, and that is equal to uh, da, 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 2.58 bits. So now we have that the information content associated with a fair die is 2.58 bits. The average information content or the entropy associated with a fair die is 2.58 bits. So that's what we have for the fair die. Um, but now let's look at an unfair die. So over here, I've drawn the probability table for a die which isn't fair. And um, what we have is that the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 each come up with a probability of 1 over 10 as opposed to 1 over 6, which we had before. And um, the probability of the number 6 coming up is a half. So it's much more probable that a 6 will come up. So now we have two different values of information content, right? We have one for all of these numbers where the probability is equal to 1 over 10. And we have a different one for number 6 where the probability is equal to a half. So let's calculate this. So I'll just call it Q1-5 to signify that this is the information content associated with each one of these. Um, and that is equal to minus k log of 1 over 10, which is equal to k log of 10. And then q6 is equal to well, it's a half, I won't go through it all again, but that's equal to k log 2. So now let's calculate the Shannon entropy for this unfair die. And there we have s is equal to, well, like before, we can, uh, we'll take the entropy of these first five outcomes here, one to five first. So we'll say we have uh, k uh, log 10, and that is multiplied by um, a fifth because we have it, f um, sorry, that is multiplied by a tenth because the probability of each one of these occurring is one over 10. And then we have that five times, so we multiply that by five. Um, and then we have to add uh, k log two, which is the information content with, of the last term. And then we multiply that by the probability of this last term occurring, and that is a half. So let's simplify this further. Um, I'm just going to set k equal to 1 at this stage, so I don't have to keep writing it out. Um, so we have log 10 multiplied by a half. So this 5 over 10 is a half. So that's the same as uh, log of the square root of 10. Because remember, if we have a multiple, um, timesing this logarithm, then we can do the reverse of what we did over here. Instead of bringing a term out the front, we're bringing a term out the front up into the, um, the exponential, um, sorry, the power of the, the number in the logarithm. So log of root 10 plus uh, log of root 2. And another rule associated with logarithms is that if you have two logarithms added together, that's the same as one logarithm with the argument being the multiplication of the individual arguments. So this is actually equal to log the square root of 20. 
And again, since we've set k equals one and we're taking log to be log base two, then this is equal to 2.16 bits. So there we have it. We can now compare the entropy of a fair die 2.58 bits to the entropy of an unfair die 2.16 bits. And well, the first thing to notice is the entropy is higher for a fair die than for an unfair die. And why is that? Well, we discussed that um, this entropy in terms of information content is a measure of our uncertainty about the system, our measure about the average surprise we get when we measure the system. And this is actually the state of maximal entropy because we have the least idea of what is going to happen here. Each number is equally likely to occur. Whereas in the weighted die, we have a much better idea of what's going to happen. We know that half the time the number six is going to come up. So our average surprise, the average amount we learn following a measurement is less because initially we have more certainty about what's going to happen here than about what's going to happen here. Um, what else can we say at this stage? Well, you'll notice that the information content for, um, for each, each event here is k log six. And actually the information content is higher in cases one to five here, k log 10. This is bigger than k log six. Um, but the point is that these happen much less frequently. And because they happen much less frequently, they contribute much less to the average information content, which is what the entropy is measuring. Um, so those are the two things here. So when we have maximal uncertainty about, about what's going to happen, that is when the entropy of the system is at its greatest value. And when we have a better idea of what's going to happen, even though it would be a heck of a surprise if we were to measure a one or two or a three or a four or a five, on average, we get less surprise because we have more of an idea what's going to happen here. We're probably going to get a six. Well, 50% of the time we're going to get a six. So that's our first example. Um, we're going to look at one more example now, and that is of a Bernoulli trial. So a Bernoulli trial is a two outcome random variable. So what I've done here is I've written the two possible outcomes as one or two, doesn't really matter what they are. And then the probability of one occurring is P and the probability of two occurring is one minus P. So let's just dive straight in now and calculate the entropy S. So that is equal to, I'm going to set K equal to one for simplicity. So the first, the probability of one happening is P. And then we multiply that by log of P. And then, um, so this, is, this should be a minus here because we have the minus out front. And then we have minus one minus P uh, multiplied by log of one minus P. And this is a very general statement. And the reason I just wanted to briefly show you this is because what we can actually do is plot this here. And that's what I've done. So this is the graph of the entropy S as we vary what P is. So um, remember that P is the probability of event one happening. So one minus P has to be the event, the probability of event two happening, right? Because one of these events has to happen. And if we take P plus one minus P, um, then that is equal to one, i.e. certainty. So one of the events definitely has to happen. Um, so the question is, where is entropy maximized? And um, as you can see in this graph, or if you were to plot the graph yourself, as you would find out, that this maximum here, where S is at a maximum, is actually where P is equal to one half. That is where we have maximal uncertainty about whether it's event one that's going to occur or whether it's event two that's going to occur. And that even though the information content um, for, if P was very, very, very low, right, then the information content associated with, um, with event one would be equal to, um, k log of, um, of, sorry, minus k log of one over p. So if, um, if p is very, very low, then let's just plot that up here, then it'll look something like this, the information content, that should be more of a curved line, but the point is it passes through this point. Um, and as p gets 
very, very low, the information content of um, event number one gets very, very high, right? It gets high extremely quickly. But the point is that with the entropy, we're working at the average surprise. And because the entropy includes this extra factor here of the probability of um, event number one happening, if P is very, very low, then P log P contributes less and less and less to that average information, to the entropy. Um, so that gives an idea of what we're looking at with, um, with Shannon entropy and with information content. And like we've talked about before, at first glance, this seems very, very far removed from the entropy which we study in thermodynamics and in statistical mechanics and the entropy that's concerned with systems of particles bouncing around. But there is a very, very deep connection there, and that's evidenced by this formula here of the Shannon entropy being of exactly the same form as the formula for the Gibbs entropy, which we did derive from statistical mechanics. And in the next video, I want to dive into that in more detail. So the next video, we are going to talk about information theory and thermodynamics and how those two disciplines are so fundamentally connected to one another. I look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye.